Square Ball Podcast. Hello there, welcome to the show, the one everybody's been waiting for. Dan Moylan with you with Michael Normanton and Moscow White. Daniel Chapman as well as we do propaganda. This is the Chelsea half. We find out what's been said about the Leeds-Chelsea game from an away fan perspective. We often do clips as well from around the football world to find out what's going on outside uh, outside our four walls. Are we bothering with that this time or is it all just revelling in blue misery? There's a bit of American stuff, but mainly Chelsea. I mean, after from Southampton where they've got like two lads doing it all... Just endless, endless amounts of Chelsea stuff. Too much. Too many people. Yeah. For Christ's sake, some of you stop doing it. <laughs> people might be saying that about us. Who knows? Who knows? Um, should say that the show is brought to you with Levi Solicitors as well. We thank them for their support. 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Uh, right, let's start on a clip that was given to us by um, LUFC Tux, which I believe is Texas, which is Chris, uh, who got in touch and said, uh, you guys need to like hear this. It's the Telemundo which I think is the Spanish language uh, output in America, isn't it? Um, and their commentators. We might have heard a snippet of this on Jackie's socials as well, um, because he put it out, didn't he? It was the his, well. You'll hear his name mentioned in this. Let's not spoil it. It's quite a long bit. It's three minutes long. You'll understand why it's three minutes as well as we get through it. Um, but I think it captures the the essence of what happened at Ellen Road on Sunday absolutely perfectly so there's a little bit of pre-match where in the very opening clip they talk about the Qatar World Cup you'll hear that mentioned then there's the goals and in between the goals there's one of Melier's saves as well which is very nice so enjoy this Del primero de los dos partidos en la pantalla de Telemundo a 91 días del inicio de la Copa Mundial de la FIFA Qatar 2022 en marcha arranca el partido ya están jugando en vivo en Ellen Road Ellen Road atrás para Mendy Mendy no. He's doing well, isn't he? Spent all game calling him Jackie Harrison. Um, Quite says, rightly, says Chris. Quite rightly. Likes his job, this fella, doesn't he? I like his job. Presumably, he's in the studio. He's watching this as well. He's gone again. He's not at Elm Road. You've not come across yeah. him in your in your press area, have you, the Oscar? Tuts. The tuts. <laughs> Imagine that. Leaking through on Don Guzman on Sky. Jackie David Harrison. So which which channel is that from? Tele, Telemundo, it's called. Yeah, I can't find... I'm trying to work out who it may, might be. I can't find a commentator for Telemundo, but the Spanish language uh, possibilities, it's either Alberto Montoya or Paulo Andrade or Copan Alvarez or Julio Hernandez. It could be uh, one of those guys across the 
um, and I've just found um, the Internet Commentator Database, which is a website I've never seen before, but I am now not going to say anything throughout the rest of the programme because I will be looking at this. How fascinating. Before we get on to the upset Chelsea fans, then, I, I did also find a clip from the Brazilian ESPN. I mean, I didn't, despite listening to many of Bielsa's press conferences, didn't pick up much Spanish from it. I don't speak any Portuguese either, mm-hmm. but I think you can... Obrigado. That's yes, that is true. We're doing that one, but I think you can you can kind of get the gist of what he's uh, what he means on this. On this is the first goal. Thiago Silva recuando, deixa a bola lá atrás. Mendy, que é isso, Mendy? Não, 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 Mendy! Não, 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 Mendy! O que é isso? Goal! Aerosol! No, 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 Menji. No, 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 Menji. That could be. Um, I apologize because I think we're, we're lumping together uh, Spanish and Portuguese and uh, all of the commentators. But ESPN2, South America, it was Miguel Simon on duties for that match. So that could be him. It could all be wrong. Um, but, you know, it's nice to kind of know who some of these people are if they are indeed the people we think they are. Um, let's happen. move on to Rory Jennings then. Um, the Chelsea simpleton who seems to have built himself a bit of a profile. Hi, Rory. Um, <laughs> he did a prediction show, didn't he, some weeks back about how bad Leeds United would be. Um, what I like about Rory is he sounds very, very earnest. He's got great courage in his convictions of his opinions, which are often uh, wrong. Mm. I mean, it's, it's his mate as well in this. I don't know who he is, the other one, but um, they're, they're both wrong. 19th. I've got a left field choice for 19th. People oh, aren't going to okay. like it. Interesting. I've gone for Leeds United. I think Leeds are going down. I think a lot of people have Leeds in their bottom three. Do you? Yeah, I think you, they were crap last season and they've lost Rafinha and Kelvin Phillips who are easily their best players, number one and two by a country mile. No disrespect yeah. to the, the Luke Aylings and the Lee Coopers. They bought in, the they, bought, they spent They bought money. in a couple of unknown Americans. Mm. Not Just for the me. players. Yeah, even Bielsa, you know, he's, he's godlike over there, isn't he? Mm. I mean, everyone loves Bielsa. He, he walks on water. He had that team. He had, I know they were mm. injured at times, but he had Rafinha, he had Calvin Phillips, Badger Bradford, they still fell off a cliff. Mm. So even with Bielsa there, they were going to go down in my eyes. They've changed it. Jesse Marsh came in, done okay in the first couple of games. Not for me. Leeds are gone. Leeds are gone. I'm inclined to agree. Well done, lads. I mean, there's a long way to go just yet. A couple of unknown Americans. Oh, yeah. What they mean there is a couple of unknown Americans to me. So they are exposing their own ignorance. I mean, I've not uh, heard of them either, but you know. But, yeah, but you weren't out there saying. Well, they're going to be shit because I've not yeah, heard of them. Yeah, that's very true. Have you not heard of them? Well, not really, no. Tyler Adams, captain of the USA. <sighs> Only when we started being linked with him, truthfully. Ja- I mean, I'd heard of loads of Brendan Aronson before January. Mm. Loads. Well, I had heard of him. I wouldn't describe myself as by any means an expert in everything he'd um, ever done, but I was sort of aware of them as footballers because mm. I'd take an interest, Michael. Oh, very good. Unlike you and Rory. <laughs> um, anyway, we, we did have a post-game show from Roy, did we? He was, was a bit delayed in doing this because he was so upset, he said, after, oh, the, after the defeat. He, was he, was, really? he was kind of... A, well, I, the caption on his show was Chelsea are pathetic in capital letters, wasn't it? Yeah, he's annoyingly reasonable in this. I hope he'd be in, more in tears. But there we are. They're still lost in there, and that's the important thing. It was heartbreaking. Full credit to Leeds. They were brilliant. And painfully, full credit to Jesse Marsh. He obliterated Thomas Tuchel. He got it right. Tuchel got it all wrong. And Marsh should hold his head very high today. But this is so unacceptable. Chelsea and Leeds have such a strong rivalry. There will be a huge swathe of Chelsea fans that will tell you that Leeds United are Chelsea's biggest rivals in the league. Leeds United fans will sing about Chelsea every game, about washing your mouth out, son, and that. It's a rivalry that we should embrace. Football is about tribalism, about aggression, about rivalry. And... As much as I dislike Leeds, I think the Premier League is a richer place for having them in it. You want them in the Premier League. Yeah, you you can revel when it goes wrong for them in the Premier League, but you want them in the Premier League because these are the games that matter. You know, you're not going away to Bournemouth. You're not going away to Brighton. You're going away to Ellen Road. This is a privilege. I do like it. I say the earnest delivery, I think, is fantastic. Um, and thank God that Jesse Marsh has got Rory's validation. I think he'll, he'll yeah. finally be yeah. able to sleep at night. He can hold his head up high, whoever he is. There's something about... Um, Rory saying that uh, football is about tribalism and aggression that brings to mind me trying to call a fight on. Like, what what exactly is he meaning by this? It's about 
aggression. I mean, I don't mean to. Be, I think Rory Jennings is probably, and I'm not trying to call him on, one of the few people I would probably fancy my chances against <laughs> if it came down to um, a street brawl. <laughs> what would you do? What what would your move be? I mean, I know you don't want to give the game away, just in case. But I mean, if it's this guy, I'll blow on him. Mm. He'll fall over. Um, but yeah, it's something kind of funny about Premier League YouTubers trying to turn it into like, oh, it should be about aggression. Shush. <laughs> you know, it is not the 1980s. You are not hard. Um, Sirius XM, Michael. This is a an American, it's a satellite subscription service for radio, isn't it, Sirius XM? Yeah, I tried finding a cleaner version of this because it was sent in by an unnamed listener, so I don't know who, if you did send it in. Hello, mysterious stranger. Thank you very much. But Maybe, this... maybe it's Howard Stern because he's on Sirius XM, isn't he? I don't think it's Howard Stern. Is it not? I don't think so. Prove it. Um, you can prove it by playing it if you want, but more bad predictions from Chelsea people. James, uh, you have a big problem, mate. You have a big, big problem. And your problem is two words. Ian Mellier, your goalkeeper. Uh, I think the problem with him, he, obviously he's young and he's come in and he makes mistakes, but I think the real problem with him and the problem for Leeds is he's crap. <laughs> uh, you need a new goalkeeper otherwise you're going to be in trouble that's my that's my take interesting it's good it's always good when people have a take like that isn't it that it's clearly just pulled out of their ass <laughs> to create a problem because he's not crap no and no objective in fact even the most biased football supporter who's seen Elon Mellon play would declare him as crap just because it's like saying you know, Allison is crap because he made a mistake for Liverpool. What a terrible goalkeeper! I mean, that's my take, and I'm sorry, Liverpool. If you <laughs> if you want to win anything next season, you've got to replace that goalkeeper because I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. He's crap. That I've said it. That's my take. You can't take that take away from me. <laughs> Absolute. Watch idiots. the watch the game again. Tell me who was the crap goalkeeper. He was. Um, Melier got a bit of a raw deal with all those saves being offside. Mm. But the one from Conor Gallagher in particular was brilliant. And the ones that, um, there were a couple, the one from Mason Mount that went through somebody's legs in the first half and he saw quite late mm -hmm. and he put round. And then there was another one that kind of, it wasn't, I think it was Gallagher. It was going towards the far post and it kind of took a slight deflection. Not Neither of them were like spectacular, acrobatic, breathtaking saves, but they were just really good, solid saves that not every goalkeeper would make. Just shut the fuck up. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> should honestly. We, should we hear some upset at Chelsea fans instead then? Yes. Chelsea yeah. Fan TV watch along. Oh, this, is, 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 am I going to enjoy this? We've got two thought? aspects of Chelsea Fan TV. We've got the watch along and then we've got someone who was actually at the ground. Well, a couple of people are actually at the ground. Okay. So, but this is this is from the watch along. 1-0. So this is going to be them celebrating their own goalkeeper, no doubt. What are you doing, Mendy? Fucking idiots! An absolute fucking shambles like you've, you've, you, I would say like you've never seen before, but he's done it before. And he's been caught again. What on fucking God's green earth have I just seen, man? What have I just seen? Mendy's complaining like it's someone else's fault. It's your fault, my guy! What are you doing?! <laughs> I like the, uh, my favourite part of that was that you could just hear the creak of the chair <laughs> in the empty room, me sitting in showing. I mean, just gives it a little little context. Like we said before, right, you know, the reason why we would never do watch longs is because fundamentally it exposed at least me and you, Michael, as bad people mm. uh, who say ridiculous Moscow things. Moscow just as a confusing person who sits there, stony face, just yeah. absorbs to it the all. good and the bad. Yeah, um, but like my behaviour inside, what I can draw a parallel with that, and I think some of it is put on. Like my behaviour inside a football stadium is at times bad mm. and juvenile and pathetic. Just like my emotional well being is tied to Leeds United in a really unhealthy way. It doesn't need to be recorded. <laughs> it doesn't need to be put out there and it's absorbed by the noise around you in the stadium. You know, like we were mm. saying, weren't we? Like when uh, what's his face who got sent off? Could I can't pronounce his name, say it for Cooley Bali. Cooley Bali, yeah. Um got sent off. Like we we were in there like, get, get off, get off, he's been blocked, get him off. Pathetic! Get off! Go on! Get off! Fuck off! Like that. And that's fine, because that's a football stadium, that's what people do. Um, does it need to be committed to the internet forever? Probably not. It's not for me. Some people like it. I'd find it more difficult to do anything like that if there was a camera on me. I think 
someone's filming this, so I better not do anything stupid. <laughs> but it seems like the opposite is is successful. So. I'll, I'll build a career off it. Yeah, mm. let's say two 0 then. It's a fantastic goal. It is an absolute beautiful goal. But was it a free? Kick? I just don't. I'm not. I'm not having. I'm not doing the old excuse thing because I'll say right now they are absolutely fucking us here. <laughs> It, it was a free kick, um, not the final contact that was where you wondered if it was inside the box mm. or not. Where the free kick was taken from and the initial pull actually was in the right spot. Right, okay. Yeah. If you Rock, watch it again. Rocker did a good job of going down in the penalty area though, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. That's what threw me why, because I think the only replay I saw during the game was him kind of just collapsing <laughs> into the into the penalty area and smacking the grass. And I was thinking, I, I really don't see why yeah. we got anything. But yeah, it made, uh, it made sense when you saw the full thing. Good old Sterling. It was a good... Good of him. That set up our uh, uh, second goal, and all it needed was a bit of um, hard whispering between the two boys, and they sorted it all out. Hard whispering. It's a good name for an album, isn't it? Right. Let's, New podcast. Uh, hard whispering. Mm. <laughs> hard whispering with Jackie and Brendan. Hard whispering. Right. Let's uh, do the red card bit. Cooler Bali is going to be sent off. I called it. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I called it, ladies and gentlemen. I called it! Reel the tape back! Reel it back! I said Koulibaly would get sent off! I said it! Fucking called it! I called it earlier! There you go! There you go! I said it! Koulibaly bye! There you go! Yep. He and called it. He did call it. When I get something right, I'm normally quite happy about it. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I, I, I thought that was going to happen, and it did. And so I, I feel good about it. He, he just seems even angrier. Mm, it's true. Take that as a win. Revel in the pleasure of, of being proven correct. Sure. If that's, and you can enjoy if that's being, enough for you. You can enjoy being correct into the next game as well when you're talking about the team selection. Remember, he's suspended because, like I said, roll the tape ah, back. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. No, you're absolutely enjoy right. It, I enjoy it all over again. But should we move from that man's uh, bedroom to actually inside the stadium then? Yes. So this was a, this is still Chelsea fan TV. It is, yeah. But this is the guy who was actually in the ground. He's he's very muffly in the, in the, for the most part. But this is just in because you can hear the, no, the background noise. Oh, lovely! It's nice. It's horrible being in a way end as well, yeah. and knowing you've been absolutely dicked or fuck, absolutely fucking us is what he said on the last, uh, the last, the watch along man, wasn't it? And for the benefit of anybody who wasn't there on Sunday, is there a fire drill? That was one of the songs. Mm. Uh, we can see you sneaking out. Things like that. Glorious, glorious things. At least his reaction was. That's a genuine reaction, isn't it? Yeah. Never mind the so. jumping about, screaming in a empty room stuff to say, I "Just want to go home and have a spliff and go to bed." Like that makes perfect sense. Mm. That's it. I mean, because we've all been there when we've wanted to leave a ground at those 70 minutes when it's just awful. And you, But yeah, you're, sometimes you'll you'll just stick in there, just for the grim survival yeah. aspect of it. But some people will well, leave. Especially if you're miles away from home. Yeah. Like, you know, your train's not going to turn up any sooner. Go just, st- just stand in the car park next to your bus. Yeah. Or in that case, I guess a bunch of them might just moseyed back into town or whatever. But uh, anyway, um, this is his sign-off then. Yeah, normally I've, I've watched him before when they've beaten us. And they do a, he does a bit after the game, talks mm. about the performance, all that sort of stuff. This is what he did for this one. Cool, I'm out. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of respect for that, in fairness. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely the right thing to do. <laughs> that, that communicates much better than any amount of screaming just how bad that was for Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, and I completely. Like, I feel quite. Um, I have no sympathy for the uh, the likes of Rory, but that guy. Um, you know, you almost start to feel sorry for him because <laughs> I know that feeling too well, and it's. Um, it was. Yeah. It was the standard Ellen Road feeling for many a year, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, you'd leave and just think, "Fuck oh, off, fuck I'm off, out. I'm, out. I'm out." Not watching the football league show. Fuck <laughs> off. Yeah, all of you. Last thing you're gonna do when you get home is watch any other football. Somebody's trying to tell you the scores. No, don't care. <laughs> perfect. God, if we'd gone down, we'd be on we'd be on ITV4 on a Saturday night, Every which time. is better than, better than Quest, by we'd, which was the obscure mm, channel that we were on. We'd have the little uh, saxophone theme music, though. I've not watched it. 
No, it's got, <laughs> which um, says a lot about where we are now. If it's uh, if it survived from the opening episode, and if it was even all real, it seemed like it was a bit of a, a dream at some points. It seemed like the they've got the music from like a midday panel program, mm. saxophone style, um, to introduce um, Gary Medine. <laughs> Very good. It's Joby Mackinoff. Every time I see the midweek games going on in the championship, I just think, oh, it's beneath us, isn't thank it? Thank God. <laughs> that's why Wednesday night is going to be so much fun. Well, that's a cup game, though. That's acceptable. But it's funny, yeah, isn't it? It's a big reminder of where mm. we were. We're Premier League corporate pigs now. We didn't. We don't play midweek games. So when we're forced to lower ourselves to this EFL competition, mm. which it is, there'll be stuff like a blackout where you won't be able to watch the game if you're not inside the stadium. You know, there'll be no streams of it and that sort of thing. It's just so low rent, isn't it? The whole thing. I should point out as well, um, our Premier League status being uh, eroded by the presence of Don Goodman on the commentary. Yes. Mm. Like, that, we were supposed to be leaving that sort of stuff behind. Yeah, he, he was very earnest, wasn't he? Oh, man, uh, uh, attaching meaning to things, droning on about stuff. He was just, he is the sound of the sky bet. Mm. And why are they, they are letting him into the Premier League. It's just, um, yeah, it's not on. No, I'll be writing to my MP about it. If Keith Andrews turns up, I think there needs to be a mass, oh, God, a mass cancellation. Can you imagine of, of we subscriptions. Have to suffer these twats for so long. Although uh, David Prutton is long overdue a promotion out of the football true. league, isn't he? He's yeah, he's good, very, isn't he? very good. And yeah, and we're not biased at all. No, no, of course not. <laughs> <To be> complete... <laughs> the man that we call Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, firing off the clip there. Um, next one is the praise from the atmosphere. Yeah, so we're not corporate pigs because it's actually. Dead good is Ellen Road, and it did feel nice and raw, and I think the Premier League does lack a bit of that. The atmosphere was unbelievable today. I think, personally, um, and I've been to a fair few games, that was one of the best Premier League atmospheres I've seen live. Um, their fans are something else. That's one way to describe us. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the guy, in, the other guy in the stadium was enjoying our fans too. You could, you could hear him soaking it all up. <laughs> he did stay till the full time whistle though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so but it was, there was something there was a real there was a real fizz in the air. There was a there was a buzz there on, on Sunday. Like even kids in the family stand singing, let's go fucking mental. <laughs> Things like that. This is it. So characters is like Rory because they're trapped in the Chelsea Premier League YouTube world. Um they only have this idea of what that sort of atmosphere would be like, whereas Elland Road manages to actually still have an expression of it. There's nothing like that at Stamford Bridge. I Although really, now I'll probably have a bunch of like old school Chelsea fans wanting to send me a bullet in the post, won't I? But, you're gonna get you're gonna get your face cut. I'm mm, afraid. Uh, I was gonna say, a um, bunch of lads. Did you see the the camera angle that they cut to for? I think it was Rodrigo's as he ran over to the cheese wedge corner, and it cuts the camera that's there above the gangway, and all you could see was just the limbs flying around. And I'm glad that went out around the world because that captured perfectly what it is like to be in Ellen Road on Sunday, rather than just being a sterile angle from the, you know, from the West Stand where you can see the mass of mm. people behind you. You felt like you were in it on Sunday. Um, mm. Well, I was in it on Sunday, but um, in terms of the, the, the TV viewers, got to experience firsthand just the, the pandemonium when, when Leeds score like that. Credit, therefore, as well to the cameraman. Did we talk about him on the match ball? But when um, Aronson and Harrison were having one of their... Uh, deep whispers before a corner he was pretty much on the pitch and about an inch away from Jackie's face with his camera I've never seen um, a cameraman sort of get that close to some players was it the guy with the steady cam who does the touchline yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and normally they're a respectful distance but it was really kind of it was quite invasive um, but it helped like when I saw that uh, footage when I watched the game back um, it's like yeah great you, you couldn't really see the the pimples on on Brendan's forehead it's like really uh, that close um so that helped uh, communicate that as well but yeah i think that cameraman maybe just needs a step back would be personal space helpful. boundaries yeah. Yeah, yeah um stanford stand is another one then michael yeah getting back to a couple of watch alongs to con- compare and contrast here the art of the watch along there are basically two methods you can have there's the shouting method yep. and there's the uh, like a repeating everything Slowly oh. method. So we're going to hear the shouting method first okay. from the Stamford stand. If you are listening on headphones, <laughs> take care. Is this a noisy one? Is he's, it be, he's noisy. Is it going to compress and clip? Okay. What are you doing, Mendy? Why? Fuck off. If you've got Mendy doing shit like that, you're going to fucking concede hundreds of goals. What is that? Why did he do that? So that's that. Yeah. Then there's hundreds two... of goals. <laughs> I mean, if he is going to do that every time, yes. I don't think he will do it every game. You think? I mean, he, he only did it once at Allen Road. 
Mm. Tuchel will be like, no, I'm picking him again. I know he, he led in five on his goal line, but <laughs> sending him back out there. He keeps doing it, but he'll work through it. Our other goalkeeper's only worth 50 million quid. I cannot make a change. <laughs> right, so uh, this is 2-0 then. Ah! Fucking absolute c- I fucking fuck 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 shit fuck we are we are it's a, it's a fun hobby watching football isn't it and that's how my radio career ended <laughs> what is going on I imagine his neighbours are probably asking them Sells the same things. <laughs> so, so we've heard the, the shouty method and the, well, the sort of the grunting, the grunt, grind, the grunty, grind. sweary yeah. yelling, and now Blue Lions TV, Blue Lions TV, and this is the repeat the simple phrase. Imagine method. a Blue Lion. Quite nice, actually. It'd get a lot of visitors. I dare say. Mm. Oh, Mendy, Mendy, Mendy! No, 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 Mendy, Mendy! No, man! No, 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 no! No, 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 Mendy. No, Mendy. Come on. Come on, Mendy. Mendy, no, 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 no. What am I seeing, bro? Come on. That's poor. That is poor, Mendy. Wow. No. That is no. poor. That is so poor. Somebody needs to clip that and put it over to Unlimited. No limit. It sounded almost like he was training a dog called Mendy. Yep. <laughs> no, Mendy. Come on, Mendy. Come on, Mendy. No, Mendy. No. Sit. No. Sit. No. 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 Uh, two nil then. One moment ruined it for him, and that's it, man. Fuck. That is it. That's it. Fuck. Wow. That is it. That is it. What is? That is it. That is it. Yeah. That's it. Really, I mean, like, you know, audio, as we, as we know, doing this, some people watch it, some people listen. It's theatre of the mind, isn't it, the audio side of things? Painting pictures in the mind. Did he do that there? That's it. No. That's it. He's got a lovely voice. Mm. I think if you get, he would be well employed reading audio books or something. I think if you gave him a, a script that wasn't just one line or three words being repeated, um, he'd probably be very successful at it because he's got a really nice sonorous <laughs> delivery um, that I would listen to. If he wasn't talking about Chelsea and if he wasn't just repeating the same things over and over again. But fair enough. Congratulations on having a nice voice. Um, can I play you a podcast that I've discovered? It's got a very small audience. Um, my son has decided in his wisdom to, to launch a podcast. So, the Fool. So it's I mean, nobody's <laughs> nobody's ever made... Nothing good has ever come from that. If this is going to end up like Chilino's Leeds where he's hosting the podcast some weeks. <laughs> What's great in this is... So my son Sam, um, he's just turned 11... Uh, he's on with his pal from school, who I won't identify because he's only a kid. Um, but his pal sounds like he's about 30 and quite world weary. <laughs> so I have bleeped, so the bleep in this is me bleeping out his pal's name because, like I say, he's just he's got the right. Is, his, is his name fuck? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I just want to see what you make of this, this analysis and the um, the discussion technique, and have we got anything we can learn from this? Okay, this is our podcast. It's me Hello. and. So, Leeds versus Chelsea. <laughs> make it sound Real like shocker, yeah. right? Leeds win 3 0. What are the odds? I don't know. And against a team that came third in the league last time. And also won the Champions League season before last yeah. season. Oh my God. We did play really well, though. Leeds did. I support Leeds. Yeah. I support Liverpool. But I think Leeds yeah, played really well. Liverpool. Also, the first goal Mendy's mistake. Bruh. <laughs> Mendy, Mendy. He had so much time. I'm just happy that the Chelsea fans aren't like all the Man U fans and they're not begging the manager to sell Mendy. Yeah, because he's a good goalie. He was really good last season, wasn't he? Yeah. But then he had so much time and then but Aronson, the American boy, came in, slotted it home. Um, yeah, I think we played really well. As a Liverpool fan, what are your thoughts? Cause you're, you're... I never thought I would see the day where Melier was a better keeper than Mendy in a game. But I thought I'd never see the day where Leeds won 3-0 against a really big team. 
I find that so weird. Our team that barely stayed up last season beats one of the top three teams. Yeah, but I think we are really good now and I think we might actually get top ten. There you go. Look at that for Syrian analysis. Uh, are you sure that fuck is only 11? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a friend from school. Is he is he the caretaker or something? <laughs> Uh, it's funny. He is because Sam's only little for uh, for his age, and um, his pal is a, is a good like foot foot and a half mm. taller than him. And I think his voice has probably changed already. <laughs> Bless him. Uh, how ed- did they get you to edit that? Or I, is- I edited it down just a little bit. Just took out a couple of ums and ahs. But other than that, it's pretty much as is. Yeah, I just shortened it just so we could get through it. How but, long's the the full episode? I think it's about three minutes. Okay, longer, refreshing. Yeah, <laughs> better. Yeah. It was fucking waffling on for an hour at a time. <laughs> Have they tried just saying no, 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 Mendy, no, no? I think think there's more insight there than Rory. I didn't enjoy the Melier slander. No. What's everybody's problem with the best young goalkeeper in the world? It's no wonder he calls his friend... Um, fuck, fuck or, or, even, or even worse. It's what he was the, the name he was given. You don't you don't meet many eleven year olds called fuck, but there is. <laughs> I feel like we've we're in the presence of something special. But Sam's suggesting top ten. Would you accept that right now? I would accept top ten. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good bet. Good. Uh, right, let's move on. Also, to the- yeah, this started with um, what are the odds? I'm not sure how I feel about like gambling gambling and <laughs> analysis being delivered by 11 year olds that's a real sign of the uh... we've teamed up with <laughs> we're going to go after Paddy what are the odds of the weekend <laughs> yeah, if, if the first thing kids are going for is uh, what are the odds then it's um, yeah maybe there is some some merit in re- restricting did, did you enjoy the, enjoy the game on Sunday I don't know I was fucking leathered I can't remember any of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Checks me online accounts. So I was cleaned out. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> let's get into the uh, the wider world of propaganda then. Who's this? This is Eleven Yanks, the YouTube channel. Or as they're also known, Leeds United, eh? Hey, hey, hey. hey. There you go. He co- the guy who runs it is called Peter Doubtit. Doubt Peter Doubtit. Doubt, uh, doubt. So I'm not buying that. Doubt it. I don't believe it. Do you doubt it? <laughs> Etc. Is his wife called Mrs. Doubt it? Could well be. He is actually. When I looked him up, he's a football coach, and he's done some bits of work. In he went to India to coach for a bit, but now he's got a YouTube channel, and he watches games that have relevance to the American national team. So he's. You may have seen him on Twitter because of a song. Ah, yes. We will come to that. But compared to the Chelsea fans' watch along, it was actually quite nice because he says some fairly sensible stuff, even if his delivery is a little bit. Unusual from for, it's very different to the the, um, the shouting or repeating a phrase thing. Oh, good. Let's have a listen. Leeds have done a good job of keeping Chelsea in front of them and not letting them get in behind in the second half. And uh, you know, good for Jesse. He's definitely adjusted this second half. They've had moments where they've pressed, but more often than not, they've been a defending team to protect this lead in the second half. And that's exactly what I wanted to see from Jesse. I wanted him to see to be able to adjust, right? And right now. You can certainly say he's done that with his subs, with the way he's dropped this line back a little bit. Still pressing and still adhering to his principles, but um, maybe not pressing quite as high, right? Setting that to more of a mid-lock. Yep. That's how Jesse did his change. I was miming it for the the listeners. He held a diamond above his head. He was asked about it in his uh, post-match press conference. He said, why why were we holding a diamond up at the start of the second half? He was doing it like this over his head. And he said... That was because I wanted the, the midfield to go to a diamond. So prob- probably could have worked it out. Not one of his most obscure <laughs> signals, but he's saying that because Alan Road is so noisy, when he wants to make a change like that, he's working on having some signals prepared so he can easily communicate to the players. So holding up a Why diamond could, shape. They could do semaphore, you know, with flags. Well, the one he was doing... You, I think you're allowed to wave flags around down the touchline, aren't you? In the first... Uh, Borrow one off the linesman. Two or three minutes of the first half, um, I noticed it from... Uh, the back of the stand and then it, it, there is a little bit of it makes it onto the TV coverage he was walking up and down his technical area passing his head what does that mean uh, and bringing on Pat <laughs> I, I know he wasn't rubbing his tummy at the same time right. but it, which is a bit of a shame can you do that yeah <laughs> oh yeah well done um, so that was obviously keep doing it one of his other <laughs> one of his other signals was this is how I play which is a bit more like that's not um, that's not as easy to explain as a diamond. Excellent. Thank you, Moscow, for that. <laughs> so I thought it was relevant to what um, Doubt It was saying. Yeah, and I thought that was actual proper analysis on a watch-along. Well, he mentioned a mid-block, didn't he? 
So if somebody's saying mid block, then you can go, oh, mm, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah, I know, yeah, I know what you mean. So it's it definitely just, analysis. It's just sometimes that's something I don't recognise. So well, exactly, yeah. So it's, it's it, it must have been something because he said there was a mid block. So well, listen, this something this, was involved. This shows great strength as its accents. We all know that. Um, is he this, taking us on with that as well? This will be more up your street, will this Moscow? Because he's got a, a Cockney accent, which I'm pretty sure is better than than yours. Oh, it's up with a bloody mid block. <laughs> 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 Jesse smashes a water bottle on the touchline. Oh my God, he's so American, Jesse Marsh. <laughs> Woo! Leads three. They're going to blame Pulisic for this, aren't they? They're going to be like, it's Pulisic's fault, mate. It's because he was on the he was on the bench. It makes it difficult, uh, you know, when he's on the bench pouting. Uh, you know, it makes it difficult. It's Sinistera on for Dan James. That was very, very good, wasn't it? And the real switch there as well. Is it Don Cheadle who's in uh, Ocean's Eleven who does the American oh, accent? Sure. Is it? I have to, I have to double check the cast. But, but the way he said, the way he said pouting was is how we, I imagine you saying it. Patting. <laughs> patting. He's, he's patting on the bench because he's, he's not happy about the mid block. <laughs> There's a very, very old podcast. And I don't, I can't have any idea what the relevance of it was, but you started talking about Addict. Addict. Ad- addict and chips. It's Charlton, isn't it? Yeah, it was not it was Don Cheadle, the, by the way. That was the addicts. That was it. Addicts, yeah. and then it was addict and chips. Anyway, just, it just I was just reminded of that while while listening to the clip. We should explain that for the benefit of anybody who is who is new to this or doesn't get the reference or isn't a long time listener. Charlton, who are in the championship. The addicts. I call the addicts. The addicts. We don't quite know why. But we did it's fish. Did we once speculate it was related to haddock yeah. fish? Addict and chips. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Anyway, maybe that's probably. a long time ago. Yes, it was Don Cheadle, by the way, in um, in Ocean's Eleven. We did the uh, the Cockney accent, right? Um, one nil. Then this is the song, isn't it? Yes, this is Aronson scoring and a little song that he does afterwards. Because I I was going to say I, I did see this. I saw the clip doing the rounds on Twitter, and I did find this excruciating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not for, it's not to my taste, yeah. but, but have a listen. We can... uh, it's ten out of ten for effort, at least. Yeah. Aronson pressing their keeper. Oh, oh, Aronson! Aronson scores. <laughs> Brendan Aronson presses Edward Mendy on a goal kick, wins it off of Mendy, who tried to beat him, and scores, leads 1-0 in the lead through Brendan Aronson. Brendan Aronson scored another goal. Brendan Aronson scored another goal. A sweet right foot and an American soul. A sweet right foot and an American soul. He put one on the blues with a sweet ass strike. Put one on the blues with a sweet ass strike. And I'll do it in Qatar for the stars and stripes. I'll do it in Qatar for the stars and stripes. Did he make that up off the hoof? <laughs> I, don't, I wonder if some of it is it was planned. The sweet ass strike, stars yeah, and stripes. That's well, it be... doesn't describe the goal in any way whatsoever. No, it wasn't a sweet ass strike, was it? <laughs> he tapped it over the line from an inch. Um, so, yes, the sweet right foot and an American soul and the sweet ass strike. No, I mean, the, the no look bit was great. Once I uh, clocked, I didn't notice that at the time. He managed to get some cheek in there. Although I think a no look tapping is well, easy, had... isn't it? Like, I could do that. But he gave it, yes. Could you? You could look, I could look the other way while I kick a ball that's already at my foot. But he gave it just Might that little bit of a flourish. Yeah. Because um, we were talking about, you know, he should have knelt down and headed it in and then Peter's song would have been even more ridiculous. Um, but he just, so we gave it a little, sprinkled a little something on it. Um, but it was not a sweet ass strike. Haddix is thought to come from the South East London way for saying haddock fish. There we go. I've... It said that a local Eddie. fishmonger would attend Charlton matches having an edic Nailed to a stick to advertise his shop. an addict on a stick. A fi- there a there fish is nothing. On a stick. Fish on a stick. There's literally nothing it's more tempting. It's the treat the children love. <laughs> nice, nice bit of addict. Got a nice bit of addict for you. I've nailed it to a stick. <laughs> and hey? it's not been in a fridge hey? for quite some time. So do you want it? Uh, come on, forget about that mid block. Got an addict on a stick. Addict. Addict. <laughs> on a stick. And you can stick, tell you what. Stick of addict. Tell you what. Afterwards. After you've had after you've had your attic, you can keep a nail and a stick. <laughs> I'm all out. I knew your mother. <laughs> Don't you fucking speak about my mother. <laughs> I am your mother. <laughs> you ain't my mother. I am. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the song. Yes. 
Are we going to... Then Moscow's having a breakdown. Are we, are we going to be hearing that, do you think, anytime soon? Yeah, I think it'll uh, it'll be on the on the Gelder next. Sweet air strike. Yeah, let's um, do the final clip then. This is what? Well, I just found it interesting because if you remember a few years ago, we deployed Barnsley and it was a struggle to get people from the Leeds area to go to it or pay any interest to it whatsoever. And now here is a man with a decent number of YouTube subscribers talking about Leeds against Barnsley as if it's an appealing thing. Can I just ask, does he sing this or? No. Oh, thank God. Next game is an EFL Cup game against Barnsley on Wednesday. Interesting. So we will do a live stream for that, definitely. I think we'll do a live stream for that. Barnsley. That'll be interesting. (laughs) Yeah, he doesn't know what Barnsley is, does he? No, he's No. no idea. But the fact that he's kind of going almost trailing it as in like oh that's going to be good people are going to people are, in America are going to watch a man watching us play a league cup game yeah wild isn't it and that's going to be and that's the thing that people want to do now yeah strange how things change isn't it yeah because we, we were kind of we, we loved like when Bielsa was here that the uptick in South America of the TV coverage there people latching onto it all the Spanish commentaries and now we've got this this whole other brave new world where is it next? Next manager is going to have to be maybe Chinese, so we can tap into For the, the market. Yeah, mm. tap into the markets out there next. Although, are there any good Chinese footballers? Got to be someone, isn't there? <laughs> Probably. Scum had that one years ago, didn't they? And he never played. Or he played like one game, and he was absolutely awful. That was obviously signed for um, for, for marketing, marketing reasons, yeah. purposes. And they're surprised that they've just become a massive, awful corporate machine that the owners are taking dividends out, and they're upset about it. They've been trading off it for years. What's the problem? Sold a lot of tractors, aren't they? They have sold a lot of tractors. Um, does that wrap up this um, this propaganda Chelsea half then for now? Does that was fun? I think so. Yeah, we've got more coming propaganda extra because Chelsea yeah. stuff just it just basically never ends. They, yeah. they will they will keep putting things out forever. Will Chelsea fans? So yeah, propaganda extra is the show for RTSB Plus members where we will do a few more clips, have a little chat around some of the uh, the other stuff that's come in as well, um, ideas, feedback. Um, the, the question seems to be: Have Premier League managers always been such wankers? <laughs> Needs to be the subject for the day. On Propaganda Extra. Look forward to chatting about it over on that. We'll see you there. The Square Ball Podcast.